Ladies and gentlemen, it being very Christmassy out, I have seen the latest Christmas movie, Fat Man, with Mel Gibson and Walter Goggins. Walton Goggins. Yes. Let's just get this out of the way. Yes, I'm Jewish. And Mel Gibson said something anti-Semitic while drunk. And, you know, I don't know the man. So let's just be clear on the fact that who he is as a person shouldn't really impact my enjoyment of his movies. I was a Mel Gibson fan as a kid. I always loved his work. And, you know, he is, um, he is in this movie, what would happen if Tim, Al Tim Allen were, were Santa Claus? Before I get any further, let me, uh, let me remind you folks that for every thousand subscribers I get, I purchase a bracelet from 4Ocean. And 4Ocean then pulls a pound of trash out of the ocean or off of our coastline. So, if you could support this, if you could support this channel by commenting, liking, and subscribing, that would be very nice. Because it would help the world. Also, I am wearing a blanket. It's not because it's cold. I live in California. It's because I got ketchup on my shirt. And I'm trying to save water, so I don't want to... I know it, it sucks, but we're in a lockdown and California's in a drought, so... Anyway, so Fat Man is the idea of what if Santa were real? <laughs> in a gritty, it doesn't work sort of way. I mean, to be clear, if Santa were real, he could tell the United States government something along the lines of, why don't you tell the entire post office to take a day off? Give me all of the letters, and I'll go distribute them in mailboxes, which would take me less time than it would to distribute all the toys and fund my operation by that way. But no. No, it does, doesn't work that way. So, so uh, he could even deliver mail on Christmas, now that I think of it. So, what has happened is that there are too many dang naughty kids in the world. And Santa is funded by the U.S. government paying him for the amount of toys he distributes. They're more than happy to do this because... He gets stupid Americans to spend a lot of money on crappy holiday stuff. All right. So, now, Santa, because he has a factory, because he's Santa, his factory is the most efficient in the world. But, you know, feeding elves is apparently more expensive than feeding children. So childhood labor is also really digging into his business. So he can't outsource anything in order to make a higher quality product. He can't, you know, take on a contract to, uh, to, to hold this over. Okay, so, so he's looking for money and the business is going down and he has to take a contract with the U.S. government. All right, there's that. Now, further along those lines, there is a real D-bag kid who wants to murder Santa because he thinks he deserves better for Christmas. And he hires an assassin who also... Ha th this is a convoluted plot. I mean, there is too much... Ah, itch. There is too much going on in this film. And that's the problem. You know, 
it's just it's so much going on that they they've they, you know, I mean they've they've raised the stakes to this ridiculous level. It's like look, okay. For one thing, I actually have worked in factories that made parts for United States fighter jets. I'm not kidding you. Two of them, in fact. Uh, one of them made electronic control systems, and the other one um, was a lithography plant. None of them had armed guards. Santa's workshop is beefed up in security by having the... I mean, they would have to be top-secret systems in order for them to have anything to do I mean, there was one time an army officer actually came to the facility I was working at because he was having problems with the control board for a tank. So, I mean, you know, really. I've worked at this facility. It looks nothing like what they make it look like in the, in the workshop here. That's number one. And number two, so you've got some guy who's an assassin. I mean, I don't know what kind of gun he used, but the United States Army wears armor. Okay. And especially in these cold environments, they would be, you know, heavy suited because it's effing cold and that would keep them warmer. But I mean, again, if they're, they think there's a legitimate threat, they're wearing something that's going to stop a bullet. I mean, modern helmets are Kevlar, so it's just stupid how many guys, this is video game rules where you've got the hero slash villain who could just go through droves and droves of enemy troops and, and not not uh, break a sweat. It's dumb. Okay? So from a standpoint of this is a realistic movie, which it really isn't, it's, you haven't real made Santa realistic. I mean, yeah, okay. Bring Santa into the real world and start, start applying real world problems to him. He's also got some kind of a magic where he can, he can, um, have some magic solutions. <coughs> Excuse me. That's just one of those things. So yeah, it, it fails there. Now, do they actually call this a comedy? Yes, action, comedy, fantasy. Okay, so the comedic elements aren't really there. Now, um, Goggins there, Walton Goggins, his comedic elements are, are in line. However, I don't think he plays the assassin all that well when he's actually shooting. That's one of those things, is that, you know, he's got this sort of flat character, and I think there should have been more layers. Which is, you know, he's got this beef with Santa, and that that's a thing. Now, um, Gibson's Chris, for Chris Kringle, you know, eh, doesn't look very Santa-y, but that's kind of the point. So I'll just miss that. Where this, this movie's best actor, in my opinion, is actually this, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher this, but it's, uh, Mariana Jean Baptista as Ruth or Mrs. Kringle because really excellent choice you know she just brings the character to life everything I would expect out of a Mrs. Claus played straight and normal in this outlandish premise so again this movie suffers from a we have to make a movie itis where they're bringing together all of these elements that um, you know just don't work I mean is there a reason we had to have US military maybe it's a budget constraint <coughs> I really hope I'm not getting sick we do see Santa's sled. It never flies. We see a little bit of the reindeer. I mean, those are in there. 
But yes, this is a low-budget film with a um, high-budget feel. But really, you know, I think the level of bloodshed that they tried to press into it just is, is what kills it. It's just, you know... I can deal with everything else. It's just... You get a lot of red snow there that wouldn't... I mean, I don't care how great this guy is as an assassin. It's just, it's just too ridiculous. And it's not funny ridiculous. It's stupid ridiculous. And that's not a good place to be. So this is a watch only if you're bored. If you don't have anything better to watch for Christmas, this movie ends well. It drags in the beginning. It's a very long first act. So watch it only if you're bored. That's just my opinion. Love to hear yours. Comments below. I'm Richard. Oh, greetings, humanity. Did you know that Richard, the man in this video, will spend his own money to remove trash from the ocean for every thousand subscribers he gets once he is monetized? Yes. And you can, you can help. You can help by liking and, and commenting on this video and, of course, subscribing yourself. And you should do that. Or else I will come to your house and do unspeakable things to your cheese. Yes. Cheese. Uh, mm.